Hi, I'm Megan, and in today's Learn to Monetize More video, we'll teach you how to create double-click for publishers ad units. This continues our series on tutorials of mastering DFP. We'll now pick up where we left off in the last video tutorial, where we created an ad exchange tag. This time, we are going to create a DFP ad unit. The objective of this tutorial is to familiarize you with ad unit creation. Options include single ad unit creation and bulk ad unit creation. We'll also discuss the optional features available to you as you create these ad units. Ad units are the most basic components of your DFP setup. They define the size of an ad and the specific location of the ad on a page or throughout the site. We often apply labels such as leaderboard or skyscraper to define the ad size and shape, and may apply an additional label such as news in order to segment the ad by section on the website. With that in mind, the first step is to name the ads. It's useful to create a naming convention and to stay consistent with it. We'll begin by opening a new spreadsheet. For our purposes, we'll use the following naming convention. First, we add a channel name. Our example will be channel one. The next step is to add the domain name. In our case, monetize more. Next, we'll choose our sizes, and here we'll choose 728 by 90. Lastly, we'll choose the placement or ad position. In this example, we'll choose ATF, which stands for Above the Fold. The resulting ad unit should read as follows. CH1, Monetize More, 728 by 90, ATF. Please note that we use underscores to separate the labels. The following is a list of characters you may use. Letters, numbers, underscores, hyphens, periods, Asterisks, forward slashes, backslashes, exclamations, left angle brackets, right angle brackets, colons, and parentheses. In addition, add unit codes may be up to 100 characters in length. Lastly, add unit codes are not case sensitive. Please also note that once you've created the code, you cannot change it, which means all your codes, active or not, must be unique. By using the aforementioned method, we'll create a comprehensive list of all the units we'll be using throughout the site. This list comprises your entire ad inventory, inventory which you'll eventually target through DFP line items. The next step is to log into your DFP account. On the upper right hand corner, click on the Inventory tab. Next, click the New Ad Unit button. In the Name field, let's list our example ad unit, CH1 Monetize More 728 by 90 ATF. Now go to the Fixed Size button, which is selected by default. In the field below it, type the ad unit size, which in our case is 728 by 90. The field automatically populates upon entering the ad size. You can enter multiple sizes if you want to use the same ad unit for multiple ad slots or across different platforms with different sizes, such as mobile and desktop. Under Fixed Size, you may want to select Out of Page if you want to serve creatives that don't fit in a traditional banner space or browser window. Such ads include pop-ups, floating line items, and interstitials. If the ad is for a mobile app, you may want to select Smart Banner, which fills the width of the screen but maintains a fixed height. In the Target Window option, select Top if you want the ad's landing page to open in the current window, or Blank to open the ad in a new window. Let's skip placements for now. Now let's scroll down to our AdSense inventory settings and click Override. Though this may seem counterintuitive, we choose to override or disable AdSense inventory settings at the ad unit level for the following conditions. Either you've enabled dynamic allocation by linking AdX or AdSense to DFP, or your AdSense has been disabled by Google. For these cases, we see better revenues when overriding AdSense. Moving along, let's uncheck maximize revenue of unsold and remnant inventory with AdSense. Click Save and at the top of the interface you should see a yellow banner that says Add Unit Created. The above steps apply for creating single ad units. We'll now show you how to create ad units in bulk. Making sure we're in our DFP account, let's return to the Inventory tab. Instead of choosing the New Ad Unit button, click Bulk Upload and New Ad Units. Next, click Download Sample CSV File to download a spreadsheet template in which to list and define your ad units. The sample CSV file will contain the fields and examples that are relevant to your network, based on the features you have enabled. 
In order for this to work properly, do not change the column order of the column headings. Open the CSV file and make changes based on the settings you want. Refer to the convention you used when creating your single ad unit directly into DFP. You can look at this table for assistance. When you're done, save the CSV file. Next, click the Upload and Validate button and verify that the ad unit settings are correct. The values for each column must follow the same formatting rules as those fields when you created a single ad unit directly in DFP. We hope you enjoyed our video today. Stay tuned for more updates by subscribing to our blog and YouTube channel. Bye, and we hope to see you again soon.